Donc, euh, on va commencer aujourd'hui avec euh, notre atelier qui est intitulé euh, « la, la, L'histoire populaire de la répression policière des mouvements sociaux à Montréal ». Puis on va essayer d'encadrer de, euh, cette discussion un peu euh, dans les dernières 15 années. Il y a beaucoup d'informations. On va souligner quelques, quelques instants, quelques moments. Et on, après, on pourrait en discuter de, d'autres moments et euh, partager nos expériences, etc. C'est, euh, le but de tous ces ateliers, il y a des, des panels euh, et conférences, mais aussi il y a des ateliers de partage de connaissances. Alors, on vous invite euh, euh, pour euh, ces ateliers-là de comment se défendre euh, face à des valeurs policières. Euh, il y a euh, aussi euh, des trucs comme pour le top watch euh, euh, et d'autres choses. Alors, on, veut, on vous invite à, à voir dans le programme tous les ateliers. Euh, et aussi, euh, le forum va terminer avec un show euh, euh, musical le dimanche soir à partir de 8h à le bar Imodoré qui est situé sur la rue jean talon Tous les détails sont euh, dans, sur les tracks euh, dans, dans le, l'entrée. Donc, euh, il va y avoir aussi, euh, une suite de ces, ces discussions-là, le 27 février, ici dans le centre communautaire de Saint-Roch. Alors, vous êtes invité à nous impliquer euh, dans les projets qui vont euh, sûrement euh, sortir de la discussion des stratégies euh, le dimanche après-midi. Donc, on va commencer avec le panel. Euh, on va euh, vous présenter rapidement tout le monde ici. Euh, Javi, Emma, Pat, Moubina et Alex sont des euh, organisateurs, organisatrices communautaires et militants et militantes de Montréal de longtemps. Ils euh, sont tous inscrits dans des luttes diverses, mais pour euh, la justice. Et euh, ils se, euh, s'impliquent dans euh, des combats. Euh, puis on va souligner euh, quelques instances euh, de la répression policière et comment on, on s'est organisé pour se défendre. Puis on veut terminer avec quelques leçons qu'on on veut partager comme euh, des trucs importants dans ce combat-là. Alors, ben, donc, euh, voilà, Jamie, si tu peux euh, commencer. Yeah, I'll be, uh, be co-consulting and presenting. Uh, and speaking in English this time. Um, so just a few introductory remarks to this panel. One is um, the topic is pretty immense. Uh, there's no way that we can do justice to 15 years of social movements and police repression of those movements. The timeline up on the board here, and there are uh, other materials that we can refer you to, is really rich in terms of people documenting what's happened over, uh, over the last 15 years or so, and how, uh, community organizers and activists have responded. It's important also to talk a bit about our definitions, just so we're on the same page. We're talking about, uh, we're talking about uh, social movements, um, but we're talking about particular kinds of movements. Um, if we limited our organizing and activism to uh, nicely asking decision makers to do things for us, I don't know if we'll be talking about uh, police repression and social movements. We're talking about people involved in diverse issues and causes, against police brutality, anti-capitalist movements, uh, in media folks, uh, animal rights movements, uh, anti-racist movements, that at one point or another have decided to, to push the envelope a bit, to disturb the peace, uh, to engage in, in actions, in demonstrations, and organizing that makes people in authority uncomfortable. So those are the kinds of social movements that we've been talking about over the last few years and that we're grounding this analysis in. There's a lot of other things that we could talk about that I think is important to talk about in terms of police repression, but we only have so much time. Um, and so what we're going to be sh- uh, sharing with you is, is a bit anecdotal. Each one of us will be picking out instances over the last uh, uh, 15 years or so that are meaningful to us. Um, and uh, so it's anecdotal, but I think some of the stuff that's up here, we've only highlighted the early part of, of the timeline, but uh, we've only highlighted the early part of the timeline here, and, um, but I think what it represents collectively 
his um, arrests, whether mass arrests or target arrests, people sitting in paddy wagons, people being surveyed, followed, tripped, a lot of worrying, a lot of anxiety, being ticketed, um, being pepper sprayed, being beaten, being provoked, being encircled, um, being threatened with charges, being given conditions, being criminalized in various ways, being profiled, having your name or your photo show up in police notebooks, being put up on trumped up charges, having different kinds of protesters being played off each other, fighting for bail, trying to raise money, dreading getting certain letters in the mail. That repression or the response to that repression has also meant feelings of euphoria um, and feelings of solidarity. Uh, we're not presenting, I hope, something that's negative, not at all, because the 15 years doesn't, isn't only about looking at um, the repression, but looking at the responses, and sometimes some very effective responses. Um, so because it's immense, just uh, the best uh, slide, we sort of summarize what we mean by repression in our context. Um, because we're not talking about, at least in Montreal, the physical elimination of activists but rather the marginalization of what we do. Um, so we summarized it in, in five points there. Uh, repression meaning intimidation of various forms that people will be talking about. Infiltration and surveillance. Uh, divide and rule tactics. Basically playing on protesters, the good and bad. The good, one, the good ones are the ones that do what the police say. <laughs> the bad ones are the ones that aren't willing to do that and we're played off against each other. Um, arrests, whether they're mass arrests, and there was a whole period of mass arrests at, at a point in time in this 15 year history, or targeted arrests, and uh, court proceedings. There's a, there's a bit of a, a false, uh, false dichotomy, I feel, between community and activists, as if those political activists aren't part of the communities they come from. Um, but I think it's important to just mention that, because while we're focusing on people who are political activists organizing specific political things and getting pressed for it, um, it's important to acknowledge that um, you know, being poor or being racialized or being part from a, being from an indigenous community or, or being queer or trans is another way linked to what we're talking about here in which people are targeted. Um, and that's part of the repression as well. What we're doing today is grounding ourselves in particular instances of, of, of mass arrests and police arrests and, and using that to create discussion and as you'll see a little bit later, um, also uh, to provide some really tangible ways in which we can confront that repression and ways in which we have been confronting that repression. So that's by way of intro and we'll get into all our various presentations. We're going to start first uh, in English with uh, Anna.